here, and today we are going to be taking a look at this, the Adventure Force Deuce Pro. Now this is a Dart Zone blaster put under the Adventure Force line, so this is a Walmart exclusive. I was able to finally find this in store, uh, which is why I finally got it, or you can purchase it online if you are so inclined. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how this thing works, go over the aesthetics of it, uh, go over what it also comes with, take it over to the workbench, see what's on the inside, get some FPS readings, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this bad boy. So going over how this thing works. Uh, this is a revolver style pistol, so the way it works is you pull back on the slide here, pulling back on the slide rotates your cylinder, loading up your next chamber, push forward, loads the dart itself. Now normally a pro blaster will come with a safety switch so that it locks the trigger so you don't accidentally pull it. However, this doesn't have a safety, uh, a safety switch itself, it has a safety trigger, which is why this is here. It's not a rev trigger, it's a safety trigger. So in order to fire anything, you do have to hold that down and then pull the trigger. I don't have a dart loaded, so I don't want to dry fire, but... And there you go. And you heard there, or if you did hear it, seal isn't that bad on it. Um, now to load this, there are two options you do have. One... This cylinder is swappable, so it does come with extras. So if you, instead of just trying to reload it one uh, chamber at a time, you could just pop it out, take one out of your uh, belt holster, pop it in, and you're good to go. You also do have an option of loading the cylinder already in here because on the left side of the blaster, there is a loading chamber or a loading slot. So you can see there, you're able to access one chamber at a time, so you would pull it back to either pop out your cylinder or load in your chamber one dart at a time. So there is that. Now, the reason why, if you noticed, there is no uh, buttons to remove the cylinder or open the cylinders, that's because this works a little differently than what we normally would have been used to, like, for example, the strong arm or the um, Maverick, they're able to, whether primed or not, you're able to just open the cylinder anytime you want by a little button on the side here. Like I said, this doesn't have it. What you have to do is you actually have to, oh, now, now it's not working for me, but... Um, what you do is you pull back, if you take your cylinder out, you're actually able to see what's going on, and that is this. That is a pusher breach, which is normally found in most mag-fed blasters. Well, that's part of what makes this the pro blaster, because instead of just having a gasket around here, and then firing from here and out using this as your uh, barrel, it actually loads it into a dart breach, which is honestly really nice. And see, now earlier I was actually able to unprime or reprime this thing without having to dry fire it. Ah, oh, there we go. It, it works on occasion. I don't know if that's just something funky with mine, if it's supposed to do that or it's just weird, but yeah, so. And then once you have a dart loaded, you can see right there, it's in the pusher breach, ready to fire. Now, I'm not going to fire this one off just yet because I want to show off a useful accessory that this does come with, and that's the extended barrel. And most people who have been in the hobby and like, wait, a useful extended barrel? What are you talking about? For the most part, Nerf uh, end strike barrel attachments are somewhat useless. They don't add any performance to the blaster. It's just a slightly wider diameter barrel so that uh, it kind of keeps the dart straight. But if the dart like kind of wobbles a little bit, it hits the wall of the barrel and then therefore loses power and kind of just sucks. But this, as you can see there with the light, has a metal barrel in here. So it's not just 
open space like the barrel extension for the Dart Zone Pro Mark II, this actually adds barrel to your dart breech. So with the barrel locked on, you're actually now adding about, I think it's like three inches of barrel so that this way when you do fire, you have a little bit more control and stability over your dart. Also because of the barrel, it's now adding FPS to it. At least I'm pretty sure it adds FPS to it. We will double check it later on when we're doing that, but yeah, it adds functional barrel to it. So the functional barrel also has other functions too because it has full Picatinny on top, so it actually extends the one that's on the blaster itself. It also looks like it has a mounting uh, bracket down here, so you can put a flashlight on there if you wanted. Um, the blaster itself does not have anything here, so the only way if you're going to put a flashlight on it is along the bottom part there. Um, so, yeah, that's the blaster in and of itself. So, and as I had mentioned, it does come with other cylinders, and you do also get this with your uh, set as well, and that is two additional cylinders and a holster for it. So, very similar to how the Mark II uh, came out. And also very similar to the Mark II, you also get a holster for it, which is right-handed, but, you know, it is what it is. It'd be nice if there was a universal one, but, you know, can't have everything you want. But I have to say, it is a drop leg holster, and honestly, it's not bad. I've kind of played around with it a little bit already, and it, it is really nice. I do like it. Uh, you will also notice that it has, like, two giant holes right here, and that's because with that holster, you also get a holster for your holster. Or, not really, but it's a holster for the extended barrel, which actually attaches right there. And, I mean, once it's on, it's on. So, if you put it on and you're like, oh, man, I really didn't like it on there, not to worry. Uh, you actually have two screws in the orange pegs that hold it on. All you have to do is remove those screws, and this comes right off. So, you don't have to even worry about that. Now, this, I understand the use of it, and I get it. It does feel a little redundant. But again, I understand why it's here, because if you are holstering this big monster, it goes right through with the extended barrel on it. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, it still fits fine without it. Like, you don't need the, the extra barrel to hold it in place. It still holds. It's not a solid 100% hold. Like, you turn it upside down, it's still going to come out. But, if you're not using your extended barrel, you can just stick it in right there. It's safe and secure. That actually does hold it. So, that's actually pretty nice. Now, I say that I understand it, but it's redundant because, A, you have... The holster that can hold it in either configuration so why bother with this part and then I was thinking about it if you're doing anything that's like kind of like close quarters or anything like that and you don't want the extended barrel on it which honestly would be increasing your FPS possibly again we'll check it later um, which means that much closer shots are gonna hurt like honestly a close shot from this is gonna hurt whether you have the barrel on or not but I get it if you want to take it off for if you're using it in closer quarters than you want so this way you have the barrel ready if you it ready to go if you want it or not um, but yeah that's all the accessories that it comes with I did want to show one thing off that I did realize with the barrel because you can kind of see there that it does have that rest or the um the I don't even know how to I don't I can't think a word uh, but where you could put, like, a barrel extension on it. So, I found my 3D printed AccuSaber from France Foamworks. And I was going to give it a shot. But, unfortunately, it's just, a it's just too loose. However, that didn't 
uh, discourage me because then I realized, wait, this is the barrel and muzzle from my Nexus before I had put the uh, extended uh, Curie barrel on it. That fits on fine, which means if you have a, I guess, a worker barrel or end strike barrel sized uh, scar barrel. So if the, if the AccuSaber um, mounting point was just a little bit thicker, I could put a scar barrel on this thing. And that would actually be really cool. So not only would you have the extended barrel, but you'd also have the accuracy of a scar on it. I'm sure somebody's going to wind up doing one for it either way. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to go over the main portion of the blaster. Let's go over to the workbench and take a look at the insides of this thing. Okay, so here we are at the workbench ready to open up the Dart Zone uh, Adventure Force Deuce Pro. Uh, one thing I did want to point out that I did kind of forget to mention earlier that unfortunately this does not have this while the slide lock is questionable. This does unfortunately have an actual uh, trigger lock with its slide. So when you slide it back, you cannot press the trigger at any point to deprime your pistol. So there is unfortunately that. Um, but one thing I want to look at when we do open this up is one, I'm going to disable this uh, safety trigger here, very much similar to how I did my uh, liberator. Uh, we're going to look to see if I can disable this uh, this uh, trigger lock so that I can deprime this thing if need be. And yeah, just see what else we can got in here. So I'm going to open this up real quick and then we'll take a look and see what we got. Okay, so I've taken apart the slide and the handle. So the handle is independent, just like most of the other uh, blasters. And so far from what I can tell, it's very similar to uh, an Aeon Pro somewhat setup in that you have this uh, catch or somewhat catch mechanism up here uh, built into the slide in and of itself. But you also have this piece right here, which is Unfortunately, we're getting stuck, but it's one of those switches that kind of hold everything to. Oh, there's another one there. Ooh. Okay, so there are some clips. Okay, so there are two clips one right there, and one in the back there. And so now we're going to open it up. Hope nothing explodes, which I can kind of feel it a little bit. Uh oh, okay. Uh, so that's interesting. You don't actually have to take the front orange muzzle apart. So you can actually leave the breech intact. Also, there was a hidden screw underneath there if you do want to open it up. Well, technically two, because there's one under there as well. But, okay, this is, this is a very, very basic system. So you have your rotation mech here. You have what looks like the catch right here. Your trigger your not trigger lock but your safety switch lock which i'm just gonna take that out right then and there because i i don't want it your oh no i'm sorry that's your catch there so that is either part of the tr this is either part of the rotation assembly or no oh no that is your trigger lock right there so i am taking that out So, 
with that out, I should be able to D prime. The, whoop. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Ooh. Good news. Did not lose the trigger spring. So I'm just going to leave that out for now. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So now with that out, I should be able to uh, D prime the pistol at any given moment. So yeah, this is really very basic. Uh, you do have kind of an oval plunger tube. So, I mean, take that for whatever it's worth, but I mean, I can understand why, because it's, it is kind of a svelte blaster, um, thin. And yeah, so that's not bad at all, actually. So I am going to put the, uh, the trigger back in because I do want to paint this up at some point. And I'm not doing that in this particular video. So there will be another video of me actually doing my mod on this. And ah, lo and behold. So this little panel here is literally just that. It's just a panel. Like on the side here, you can see it's held in by three clips. You can probably just pop it out to if you wanted to paint the white or if you wanted to do something special and do the panel one color and then the inter the white pieces something else but yeah so yeah this is not terribly a complicated blaster um i can definitely see you being able to upgrade the spring on it but you know we'll see where that you know what comes of those but yeah it's not terrible so i am going to button this back up and then we're going to get our fps readings and then i'm going to give you my final thoughts on what i think of the deuce pro okay so we have our deuce pro here uh we're going to be checking what we're getting on here i have both of the extra cylinders here so we're going to do six shots without the barrel and then six shots with the barrel to see what the big difference is so That is with, with um, no, that's without the barrel. Uh, that was odd that it was actually, it skipped the rotation even going slow, but I guess once it's open, you have to be at least a little careful since it is so jiggly, but I'm gonna switch it out and now, and reset and we'll see what we're getting with the extended barrel. Okay, so extended barrel time. Okay, so yeah, barrel definitely makes a difference. And now we'll give you my final thoughts on this thing. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Deuce Pro. Um, it's interesting because it has a lot going for it, but also it definitely has a, its own issues. Um, issue one being the rotation issue. Now I've heard horror stories, which also kind of held me off of getting this, that there is a problem when you're rotating way too fast 
it skips cylinders. When I was doing the FPS testing, I don't think I was rotating that fast. However, I did have rotation skip. So I don't know how prevalent it actually is, but obviously it is prevalent. So that is definitely a strike against it, especially when the whole gimmick behind it is it's a revolver. If it's not revolving properly, it's not working properly, which is, you know, the downside. Uh, but the upside is, though, the performance out of this thing. Without the barrel, you're getting well over what is considered elite performance. And once you put the extended barrel on, you're knocking it up to actual pro-level performance out of a pistol, which is really good. Um, I have to say, I was honestly not expecting that big of an FPS increase. So that was actually quite surprising and quite unexpected, which, but also quite pleasant. So there's that. Uh, now, the other part of this is price-wise. Um, according to Walmart.com, and I, I remember correctly for what I paid for this, this was only $40, which is actually still pretty damn good, seeing as a Dart Zone Pro Mark II goes for 80 and has the basically the exact same setup. It's two speed loaders, a holster for those speed loaders, an extended barrel, your base pistol, and a holster. And this actually technically comes with an extra holster. So, for your money, this is not terrible if you want to pick it up just to have some fun with it. Um, even at $40, even with the issue with the rotation mech, I'm not upset that I got this. Am I going to be rushing out to get another one? No. But I'm not displeased with it. So, I mean, performance-wise, it has its hiccups. This is more going to be something for fun. Um, if I use it at a war or anything like that, long shot at best, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to look at modding this up if not a nice paint job on it at least to see if there is any way to kind of work with that rotation issue so that's going to be it for this video and as always if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel please throw us a like and subscribe leave a comment down below let me know what you think of the deuce pro and if you have one what is your opinion on it or have you run into this rotation issue let me know down in the comments below i love reading them and all and oh don't forget to uh click that little bell icon otherwise you may not know when me and arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel but again thank you all for joining me i will see you guys next time later